Mike Lamone the third. Chief of Rochester? Yeah. Okay. What's that? Yeah, no, okay, right. yeah. So my name is Michael Brown, the fire chief in Rochester. So uh, tell us uh, what, what's happened so far and uh, what do you plan? So here's what I can tell you. The DEP uh, was working on this building as an emergency cleanup project. And uh, the workers left there around 6 p.m. And we got called for a smoke uh, report. A couple of hours later, we got down there and found uh, some sort of chemical release in the building. Since then, it's caught fire. Uh, we're taking some firefighting measures right now uh, that we can to, to control the scene. What chemicals are burning exactly? We're, we're, uh, we're not exactly sure what is burning right now. Um, we have SDSs. We're working with the DEP um, on the project. Like I said earlier, there's a contractor that was contracted to work this project. They're down there cleaning up chemicals. The building had collapsed and it was an emergency DEP um, project that they're working on. So the, the we do have a good idea on what most of the chemicals are, but there are some unknowns. So are, should residents be concerned of what, what's going on as far as residents in the area? Yeah, residents should be concerned. We put out a five mile uh, shelter in place uh, just to make sure that everyone stays safe. We have uh, fire trucks, air monitoring equipment out. We're, we're going out in that five mile radius and we're monitoring to make sure um, that the areas and, and homeowners are safe. Uh, right now we have found no, um, no adverse effects outside of the scene itself from an air monitoring standpoint. So we're in good shape and we're gonna continue to ask those residents to shelter in place until we can get further information. Do you know how long that could possibly be? I do not. I, and I, so the DEP is here. Um, are any of the roads closed? Because we heard 65 was closed earlier. Sure. Yeah, the DEP is here. Uh, they're supporting us on this project. Actually, we're supporting them. It's their project. We did have some roads shut down. We shut down Route 65 in Rochester between the old tool bridge in East Rochester to Delaware, Delaware Avenue ramp. We have since reopened those. Um, right now, we're monitoring the wind conditions, the weather conditions, our, our firefighting operation to make sure that that plume of smoke stays in the area. Uh, down at the scene itself, and if it moves, we'll continue to have to shut roads and, and open as needed. Are the railroad tracks still closed? The railroad tracks are closed. Okay. Yeah, you know, we're not we're not 100% sure how many people will be affected. The good news is that the hazard is still in the hazard area. Uh, if we start going to evacuate, we're not there yet. We want to shelter in place, and uh, right now the only people that are affected are the uh, workers that need to get down to that area like that near the martinos and the folks that work down there and you said you weren't sure the chemicals that are burning is chlorine one of them chlorine is a very good possibility that we we think it's chlorine um and we're handling the that the process that way why was the building emergency like because of the weather or just the deterioration or? yeah the the building had collapsed and fell down and uh the ep got involved and um they're asked to provide emergency uh, pro project on it. They hired a contractor to come facilitate that work. Yeah, there's a decent amount of departments here. I'm not exactly sure offhand. Um, there are a number of reasons. They're out for the uh, our, our communities and our safety. So I have I do have uh, active crews at the scene, but I also have crews out and about in the communities, air monitoring and making sure that this hazard doesn't get to folks that uh, and, and are sheltering in place right now. Earlier, the fire, just a hose down and spraying on. What was that tactic, and what has changed? Sure. So the the original uh, call came in. And we had a it was a gas release, and then that and that gas somehow combusted and caught fire. Uh, our tactic for that was to put water not on the fire, but on the plume of smoke, so that we can control the plume of smoke to keep it to try to keep it in that area, so that it wouldn't go across the river in the Manaka and up through the town here in Rochester. Um, that tactic did work for a little bit, but we're now backing off that tactic and we're going to go after another one. When you say shelter in place, exactly, what do you mean by that? So what should residents be doing? Yeah, residents are going to smell this odor, um, but we're out air monitoring and it's, we're, not, we're not picking up anything on the air monitors. We don't need to worry about shutting off the air conditioner. Um, we don't need to worry about that. Keep the windows closed, keep the doors closed, stay in your house. If you don't need to be outside of there, stay in your house until we can get further information and try to control this scene. It's got to help that it's night and everyone's basically asleep. 
Yeah, it does help. I'm just worried when folks wake up that uh, they're going to find this smell and not know exactly what's going on. So hopefully this message gets out. Um, and if people have questions or concerns, we want to funnel that through the 911 system. What towns fall within the five mile radius? Do you have an idea? Yeah, it could fall in the Rochester, Manaka, New Swickley, Beaver, Brighton Township, all the way down the river to Conway, essentially, uh, almost over to Beaver Falls uh, in the New Brighton. Um, that's kind of what we're looking at for the five mile radius right now. And again, that is a, uh, that's safety. Obviously, um, as we continue to commute through the towns to investigate, we're not finding um, these conditions that we have down here in Rochester, outside of Rochester at this point. That should have been much better before. Because it's more of a personal fire to take care of, but the coming was a really quick over. It's not your typical structural fire. Um, unfortunately, we, uh, when it comes to the hazardous material situation, we have our county hazmat team here uh, working with us, along with the DEP. This is a very, very um, complex situation that you don't act upon right away. We try to gather all the facts that we can, the, the safety of the residents, our firefighters and members here working are, are our primary um, value and concern, and we're going to continue to operate that way. That's why it's taken us so long. Um, when, do you know when the next update should be? We're um, we're going to go down now and start a new tactic. Uh, I can probably give you an update here in about an hour. Okay. And the new tactic is to spray it or hose it. We're going to go down with aerial apparatus um, and we're going to try to control and make sure that we don't have any spread into one of the exposure buildings. Um, and, and then we'll see about putting the fire out or letting it burn. We'll see where we are once we get the exposure taken care of. I, uh, we heard that maybe the, um, there's a possibility that the Pittsburgh River boats, fire boats, would be called out. Is that it's very possible. Um, they're all hands on deck when it comes to a scene like this. We know that we have a lot of resources outside of Rochester and outside of Beaver County, and uh, we will use them if need be. Uh, the airport offers some services as well, so um, we're planning for the next step, Plan B, Plan C. Uh, if this tactic doesn't work, we'll be uh, potentially going down that path. Right. Thank you. Very welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you.